first part on unit two, uh, and we're going to go through learning outcome one. Okay. Um, so the first part on the exam is all about holds of information. Now, um, to start off with there, it says uh, holds of information. Th there's loads of different holds of information that you need to know. Uh, the first one is individual citizens. So we can hold information such as phone numbers, addresses, uh, bank details, all them kind of things. Uh, business organizations, so they can hold information about uh, weekly, monthly forecast sales. They can also hold information about other businesses, uh, addresses, them kind of things. Um, also, government and healthcare. So, for instance, the NHS, they can hold a lot of information um, about their employees, about us as their customers, as, as their patients, them kind of things. Um, and then the last one there that says is um, charities and communities. So, if you want to say uh, donate some money to a specific charity of your choice, then you will obviously need to give them your details so they know where the money has come from. So just to go into a little bit more depth, um, there is here so individuals. So this is going to be information about themselves, really. Okay. Now uh, this information about themselves is going to be specific to them and to their private life. Okay, so for instance, your shoe size. Uh, a business will not need to know how big your feet are, okay? Unless obviously you need to uh, get specific footwear for that specific business. But on the whole, uh, you are not going to need to share that kind of information, okay? So again, this is just your information that you know and not anyone else does. The next one is business organization so for instance they will hold information about their employees about uh, who they do business with about um for instance any competitors so if a business is doing particularly well on a certain subject then um they can understand why they are doing that and potentially do something to actually improve their chances of um of uh, beating them in the market for instance and earning a lot more money the next one is um, all about the government and healthcare. So the government and healthcare is basically um, everything as part of the NHS. So for instance, they will hold information about their doctors, they will hold information about their patients, they'll hold information about um, the pieces of uh, sort of equipment that is in each hospital. Um, and also uh, this will obviously keep, um, this will be obviously secure data. Um, now, obviously, um, another thing will be, uh, in terms of government, will be the police. So if someone uh, gets in trouble with the police, that will then go on the police database, and that will then get checked to one side, so you can um, actually keep a hold of, uh, of their data just in case they get into trouble with the police again. Okay? And the last one, charities and communities. So this is all about holding... Information of the of the of the regular donors to the charity. Okay, now mainly this will be done through uh, doing um, sort of you know where online it might say uh, do you want to sponsor a, 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 a guide dog for instance or do you want to sponsor a bear or whatever. You will pay per month, um, say three pound a month or whatever it is, um, and they will need to keep your details. Okay, uh, also they will keep details of any local events that are coming up, so for instance, the likes of the Macmillan uh, cake and coffee mornings that they have. Uh, this is all information that obviously they need. Okay, um, going on from that, we look at something called the digital divide. Now, across the world, there is a, a divide in terms of... Um, in terms of the standard of IT equipment in specific areas. Now, this will depend on the location mainly of where they are trying to access that data from. And this will be different from, uh, for instance, developed and developing countries. So the UK will be classed as a developed country because our infrastructure of, for instance, the big massive pylons that is all around the UK, which enables us to get 4G or even now 5G uh, data across the across the country. There will still be rural parts of um, of the UK that may not get this uh, this sort of uh, coverage as such. 
Uh, prime example, I took a group of students to Colomendi, uh, and you, I, we could not get any signal at all there. That was due to the fact that the infrastructure in and around there did not have the the signal um, to actually uh, carry the data from our phones. Uh, there was one, it's called, it's called the signal tree, uh, but that is all that we could use there. We're quite lucky in the UK, the fact that we are a developed country. Other places, such as the poorer part of Africa, uh, they won't have the infrastructure as what we have, so that's classed as a developing country, which means part of the country will be developed, but most of the, most of the parts of the country isn't developed. Okay, We can also look at stuff like the workplace. So, for instance, if you are working on a building site, for instance, you might not have the facilities compared to somebody who is working in an office. So, again, it is being able to access these devices in different areas. Okay. Um, so, like I said before, developing areas and developed areas, there's just a couple uh, of points in terms of... Um, in terms of uh, what you need to know for them, really, and the characteristics evolving around that. Okay. Next part is types of storage. Okay, so this is quite easily stuff like paper. Uh, this is the most basic part. Um, a lot of people know how to write on a piece of paper, uh, and we can store a lot of information on them, file it away, and, and leave it there forever. Okay. Um, the, the good thing is, is there's no need for training really okay so people anyone of all ages can uh, as long as they can write they will be able to obviously use um, a pen and paper to store data compared to um, obviously negative where if there's a mistake happened then uh, you might have to cross it out you might have to redo it it would be really hard to edit that data Next one is magnetic storage. Now this is the most common use. These are basically magnetic disks and these are stacks uh, and mainly internal, but you can also get external hard drives as well. Um, a positive is that there's long lasting and reliable. So you can uh, use these for big backups within, um, within big server rooms. Uh, bad thing though is, is that they can be corrupt or damaged. So for instance, if they're dropped, uh, then obviously the the, uh, the discs will be uh, will, will basically shatter. Next one, solid state. So solid state is basically very similar to a hard drive, but only there is no movable part in there. It's just a solid chip that enables us to store data on. Okay. Now. Um, it will uh, it will save data onto the chips. Now SSD is much faster because there is no movable parts. So um, so for people who might be uh, on the go, for instance, this would be something really really good for you because if you're on the go, uh, it's not really going to damage the the hard drives if they are SSD. Bad thing though is they are uh, typically more expensive compared to other types of storage. Optical. So uh, optical uses uh, lasers uh, and lens uh, and lenses to obviously read the discs. These are stuff like using C music CDs, uh, films, uh, games for your Xbox or PlayStation or whatever you wanted to use. Now, obviously, there um, you can get them in read only, uh, writable or rewritable. Uh, good thing is cheap to purchase and distribute. So if you want to put a load of data on, um, you know a lot of uh, newspapers or magazines will actually give out free CDs nowadays. Uh, so again, pretty easy to send out data and pretty cheap as well. Uh, but uh, they are easily damaged. Okay, there's loads of cases, and I know from personal experience, if you don't look after your discs, then it won't actually. Um, it will scratch the disc, and therefore then it won't. Uh, it be read on whatever device you want to use. Okay, different devices. So these different devices are handheld, portable, fixed, and shared. Okay. So handheld, quite simply, is using a mobile phone. Okay, using something that is a, something small that you can just walk around with in your hand. Okay, don't get confused with a, with a with a portable device in this, okay? Because this is going to be something slightly bigger, such as a tablet or a laptop. A handheld is purely just in one hand that it's easily used, okay? So we can send stuff like text messages, instant pictures, um, instant videos. So say, for instance, we travel into an incident, 
um, and we need to record what's happening, uh, we can record it, send it back to head office, or do the same with, um, I don't know, say, uh, say a still image of certain things, and then send them back to head office. Okay. The next one after that is going to be portable. So these portable devices are generally bigger, and these allow us to do a lot more things on them, basically. So stuff like writing reports, uh, stuff like um, sending big emails, uh, maybe looking at some video footage, zooming in on stuff, editing some footage, anything at all about that. Uh, you will more likely to use these portable devices, and these are stuff like laptops and bigger size tablets or iPads. Fixed computers, so these are actual desktop computers, um, or basically fixed machines that you can't really move around. Okay, these are a lot more powerful uh, and obviously need a lot more uh, process and power to actually complete the same task. So if you were to use Word on say a uh, on a fixed machine compared to on a tablet, you're going to use a lot more um, power. So obviously that's why it needs to be fixed. Okay. Okay, and the last one is a shared device. So a shared device is going to be stuff like using um, uh, using the same device, but um, say for instance, using the, uh, the same database uh, or the same server um, at the same time as other people. Okay, so this might be, for instance, in schools they have something called Sims. That is a shared device. Okay, so you are you are able to use uh, that shared uh, hard drive, that shared server. At the same time as everyone else. Okay. Obviously, all you need then is just the um, all you need then is just the internet access, and you are fine with that. Okay. The internet and the World Wide Web. Okay. There is different. Um, there is different types of um, internet access. There are different connections. So I'm just going to run through them that quick. Now, I know I've covered them already on Unit One, but it's just going to be a quick little refresh. First one is going to be dial-up, so this is going to be, uh, years and years ago we used to have a dial-up, it was it basically um, ring uh, the internet, um, and people who used to use the internet years and years ago will know, it used to take about 50 odd seconds, and then if we, I was on the internet in my house, the phone line would go down because it's like using a phone call. Okay. With broadband, broadband is used... Um, as high speed internet basically okay and this come after uh, dial up because people got really frustrated the fact that if they wanted to use the internet they couldn't use the phone at the same time okay so fixed broadband this is basically a fixed line which basically means the way broadband uh, in your home it's delivered via phone line or through a, a provider's network cable so this is just a fixed line that we can use solely just for the internet alone okay same thing, but just for a fixed uh, wireless broadband, okay, which is basically, again, same thing. It's a separate line that will be uh, fixed within a specific business that will allow different um, devices to attach to it, basically, okay? So that's the idea of the fixed wireless. Next one's uh, uh, satellite. So this is basically using um, sort of like a GPS so if you are using, um, for instance, the sat-nav, uh, and you need to pinpoint something, so if you are, say, a someone who works in, say, uh, the breakdown business, and you need to find out where a specific car is, you can use satellites to pinpoint exactly where that person is. The next one is going to be a wireless hotspot. So this is basically um, turning um, either your phone or uh, maybe getting a say on the bus and using the uh, the wireless hotspot on the bus to actually connect to the internet um, these are typically unsecure so they typically don't have any passwords attached to them so hacking is a is, it, it's a big security risk on there okay and also mobile phones these use stuff like 2g 4g 5g it's basically how fast um, the the data can connect through your mobile phone Okay, uh, and you can use that uh, stuff like VOIP, which is obviously voice over internet protocols, which allow us to talk over the internet using WhatsApp, uh, Facebook, all these kind of things. Okay, so what the difference is between internet, sorry, intranet, extranet, and internet? 
So the intranet is something that is based on one site only and you can access it on that one site. So for instance, if you've got a shared, um, a shared dashboard, for instance, with just data for people in your company, that you can only access in that one building, that's intranet. So it's like a shared area where employees can use it and people can manage certain um, topics in and around that. Alternatively, on top of that, where we've got intranet, we've got extranet. So this is allowing us to share that out with different companies or different people. So basically, that is you being able to access the same thing, but at home. So for instance, if you wanted to work from home, for instance, if you were, say, a big a manager for a big company and you work from home, you would use an extranet to share ideas, to communicate with different people, um, and that would be over a secure um, sort of internet um, point, basically. Okay. Now, these basically, uh, the, the, the intranets typically start by obviously publishing web pages about company events, and there's just like a little example on the right hand side, as you can see. Now, um, this is stuff that you can obviously only access um, in the one area, in the one on the on the one site. Okay, that means the data in there is going to be quite secure. It's going to be quite quite classified, and you don't need to really use that anywhere else. Okay. Alternatively, we have also got extranet. So extranet is basically the same thing, but allows us to share it around different people. A really good example, as you can see on the PowerPoint, is uh, basically hospitals providing local GPs access to the booking system. So, for instance, if you went to the your local GP and said, "I need a, an I, I need an appointment at the hospital," they will be able to see the booking system of the hospital and book you straight in. Okay, which again makes the whole process a lot more smoother for the NHS because the databases are linked and they are linked to um, external hubs in and around that hospital, which then makes it miles easier and takes the pressure off the admin staff within inside of the hospital. Okay, and the last part on this, uh, pretty straightforward, it's called information formats. Now, um, now information formats, these um, are formats that allow you to to share information over the internet basically okay and these are different ways so for instance the first way is web pages quite simply that is a format and you can put um, anything on to a website or a web page such as text uh, images um, videos audio all these kind of things Next one is blogs. So obviously we can actually create blogs that will give you the idea around um, around sharing information around um, uh, sorry about sharing information around a specific topic. If you want to give your opinion on a certain website or a certain hotel or a certain service, then you can obviously do that within blogs. Podcasts, roughly the same. Um, I listen to a lot of sport-based podcasts that sort of summarise up, um, summarise up uh, specific um, specific things that have happened over the weekend or whatever. So for the football or for the rugby, uh, that's what I will listen to. Uh, stuff like streamed audio. So streamed audio, stuff like using YouTube, for instance, or uh, Netflix or stuff like that. Social media channels, so again, this is uh, enabling you to share information across these different formats. Stuff like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all these kind of things. Another way is going to be document stores, so that's like, stuff like cloud storage, uh, your iCloud, uh, your OneDrives, all these kind of things, your Google Drives. And the last one there is RSS feeds. These are basically news feeds that will be linked into websites, so when a website will uh, update, you will actually get an alert on there as well. Okay. So there is the first learning outcome for this exam. Thank you.